Hi, my name is Amy Martin, and I am the Director of Special Projects here at Lexington Law Firm. I've been here for about 14 and a half years now, and I have the great privilege and pleasure to learn from the hardest working attorneys working for the hardest working Americans. Today, joining me is one of our supervising attorneys, Daniel Woolston. Daniel, would you like to introduce yourself? Absolutely. Good morning, Amy, and good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Daniel Woolston. I'm uh, a supervising attorney at Lexington Law. I've been at Lexington Law for about seven and a half years. Uh, and my, one of my primary responsibilities is I work closely, not only with uh, supervising our attorneys and paralegals, uh, but working closely with our clients in uh, assisting them in their credit repair journey. And uh, I'm excited to be here today to, to talk about debt collection, because I think it's something, uh, Amy, as you've seen being at Lexington for so long, that affects basically every client that we've ever talked to. It really does, Daniel. And I'm glad that we have the opportunity today to chat about it a little bit and talk about what, what debt is. And what happens when um, folks want to collect on debts? And what, what is available? What kind of rules and laws and statutes are available to protect consumers? So we, uh, part of what we do, which is so delightful, is to advocate for uh, folks regarding their debts and debt collection. And if you would like to talk a little bit about debt and what debt collection is, I think that'd be a great place to start. Yeah, no, that's perfect. Uh, so, uh, you know, there's a, the, the, the thing to point out is that there's a difference between debt and debt collection. So debt, as most people know, is means that somebody owes somebody money. Uh, that there, this could be, uh, you know, a friend, if you borrowed money from a friend, that's a debt. But when we're talking about debt collections, we're obviously we're talking about more formal debt. So these would be things like student loans, credit card debt, um, uh, car payments, things like that, that means that you have an outstanding payment that you owe somebody. Now, a debt collection means that not only do you owe this debt, but now the person to whom you owe the debt is attempting to collect it. So that officially makes it a debt collection. Um, so debt collections can show up on your credit report. An important thing to, to point out is that just because you owe a debt, and even just because it's a debt collection does not necessarily mean it's going to be on your credit report. So when we're talking about debt collections and, and credit reports, we're specifically talking about those ones where you owe somebody money and now that company has put that item on your credit report showing that you owe that money. Um, it can show up on your credit report uh, sometimes as soon as 180 days, uh, sometimes sooner, sometimes longer. Almost always that's going to be governed by the agreement that you signed with the creditor. Um, so if you have the controlling paperwork, that document, that loan paperwork, that contract that you originally signed, that's often going to have language dictating what the rights are of the creditor as to when they can put it onto your debt. So it's really important that when you enter into some kind of a, a debt agreement, a loan, that you look at that fine print to see what your rights are and what the creditor's rights are as to their ability to put that onto your credit report. Daniel, this, this really is great information and it's so impactful for me, you, and all consumers because when we look to get a job, get a home, qualify for a vehicle, maybe medical insurance or a different kind of insurance, um, our credit is being looked at and our debts are being looked at. So I'm glad we went into uh, uh, a little bit of detail around that. Um, can, we, can we maybe take a moment to talk about other additional um, impact debt and less than stellar credit can have on the consumer? And then we can segue into um, what protections there are for consumers. Absolutely. So the, you know, the thing that everybody has to be careful about is that debt doesn't, or a debt collection account, an item on your credit report does not necessarily have to be from that original creditor with whom you signed that agreement. They can sell it to another company, often known as debt collection companies. 
<clears throat> these could be a, a law firm, some kind of an individual company that will then purchase that debt that you owe from that original company. And now they will attempt to collect from you. And that can be really confusing um, because you've got these companies that are coming to collect from you and you may have never even heard of the name of the company. So that's why it's extra careful that, or that's why you need to be extra careful as a consumer to look carefully to make sure that that is a debt that you actually owe. Because as you, as you were hinting at, Amy, that negative item on your report can impact your future. Because yeah, you, you could owe money and that's gonna impact you in the, in the present tense, but looking into the future, that negative item can impact your credit score. So there's so many moving parts that, that are involved in a negative item on your credit report, not only the money you owe, but the impact to your credit score. And it can be confusing because there's new companies, companies you never heard of. So that's why we, we always tell consumers, pay really close attention to those letters that you get, the phone calls that you get um, to make sure that you know who this is that you're talking to, to make sure that you actually owe the money because it can impact you now and in the future. Thank you. That is great. And Daniel, I heard you say, um, suggest that folks pay attention. And I'm really glad that you did because um, what, what we're going to talk about next, um, and I'll certainly uh, invite you to do that as one of our esteemed attorneys here, is the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, FDCPA. And um, you'll note that the first word is fair, fair debt collection. And although we may owe money and we may have some debt, the way these uh, companies interact with us um, should be ethical, should be free from harassment. And if you'd like to take a little time to talk about that, uh, that'd be great, Daniel. Absolutely. So the, the Fair Debt Collections Practices Act uh, is a protection for consumers in that um, process that happens where a debt collector is communicating with you and attempting to collect that debt. Now, the FDCPA protects you as a consumer by a number of things. And one of the things they do is it limits a collection company's ability to communicate with you. Uh, you know, it's the, the classic complaint that somebody might have about a debt collection company is they're calling me late at night. They're calling me at work. Um, I'm getting so much communication with them. I'm asking them to, you know, send me letters and they're not instead of, you know, instead of calling me. So that's one of the common things that the FDCPA does to protect on a daily basis is to, prevent, to limit their ability to communicate with you within regulated times, manners. Uh, they can't deceive you uh, when they send a letter. It has to say this is an attempt to collect a debt. Um, if you've talked to a debt collection company, they'll often start with that, you know, with a number of disclaimers that the call is recorded, that this is an attempt to collect a debt with a debt collector. Um, it also prevents them from making threats that aren't accurate. Um, the, one of the common scams that people fall into is, um, hey, if you don't pay us, we're going to forward this to your local law enforcement agency and they could issue a warrant. Right. Those things that that's not that's not a thing in the United States. Um, you can't go to prison because you didn't pay a credit card. So um, what the FDCPA does is it strictly strictly governs those debt collection companies and uh, and protects you from being harassed by debt collection companies. Now, we always tell consumers communicate with them. Right. Stay in stay in communication with them so that you can tell them, hey, I can't pay. Hey, I can't pay. Let's work something out but the FDCPA protects you up front from the way in which they can initiate and continue that communication with you. Perfect. And there's, um, and there's uh, avenues available for consumers, um, correct me uh, if, if, if need be, Daniel, with regard to the way these collection companies might communicate. They might call, as you mentioned, and consumers have a right to leverage cease and desist. And that's where they can ask these, these uh, furnishers, these, these, uh, these folks who are providing funds to consumers to say, you can contact me, but only in writing. Correct. Yes, absolutely. That's an essential way they have to respect that. And so th that kind of falls into, you know, th there are things that they can say and things that they can't say. And um, they have to respect that request from you. In addition, um, they have to uh, 
they have to communicate with you in a way that isn't a scam. Um, they, um, so what we always say, we've kind of alluded to, her, to it earlier, but make sure that somebody who's communicating with you is who they say they are and that they can prove that the debt is yours. If you're ever talking to a, a creditor and they refuse to really engage with you in, in any kind of a conversation about where the debt's from, how much it is, when it started, when it went to collections, if they're not willing to have that discussion with you, quite possible that it's that something less than honest is happening. So you have to be really careful uh, about that. So as to, you know, when these things happen, if, if your rights are violated, thank goodness under the FDCPA, um, there are things that you can do um, to protect yourself. Um, one, one of the most common things that you can do is to file a complaint with the, the, with the FTC. Um, you can go to the FTC, the CFPB, your state attorney general's office. Um, you, can, you can also sue them civilly. Now, right, there's not everybody who's had a, something happen to them has, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have a, a cause of action, doesn't necessarily mean you have a case. So um, you can't always sue everybody who does something wrong to you. Um, but you can file a complaint you, and, and let, the, let the creditor know that you know what your rights are and that you won't hesitate to file a complaint if something's happened to you. Um, often just, the, just, the, just telling them that that's something that you know that you can do is gonna be enough to get them acting the correct way. Um, but sometimes you, you, you may need to file a complaint against them. And, and when we talk about this, Amy, we're not suggesting that every debt collection company is doing this. As we know, usually it's a few bad actors. A lot of them are doing it the right way. And uh, they're, you know, performing an essential part of the economy, which is collecting debt that's owed. Uh, but they can do it in a professional legal way. And you can be protected from somebody doing it in an illegal harassing way. Absolutely. And with anybody um, who is reaching out to us, I think it's good practice to remember that they can, you can ask questions and they can provide you with information about your debt or some of the things that Daniel mentioned a little earlier, but it's probably best practice to avoid providing your information such as your social security number or your banking information, those type of things. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm glad you said that. It's, this is a, the, what some of those classic scams that are perpetrated against people who don't don't know how debt collection usually works. If something feels wrong, don't hesitate to hang up the phone, right? You, it's, they called you, you don't have to talk to them. Um, tell, them to set, tell them to send you a letter, hang up the phone. If you feel uncomfortable, if you feel like they're asking for information that's leading a direction you don't like, personal identifying information, social security numbers, home address, uh, yeah, they have definitely account numbers, um, hang up the phone. Hang up the phone and talk to someone. Uh, you don't have to call and talk to a lawyer right away. Call and talk to a family member, somebody that you know might work in with a bank or with some kind of a financial industry, somebody who might have more experience than you and ask them, hey, I got this phone call. They were asking for this. Is this normal? Should I feel uncomfortable? Should I tell them to send me a letter? So yeah, don't hesitate to ask questions. You don't, you don't have to talk to somebody on the phone if you don't want to. That's great. And as you mentioned, Daniel, quite often, more often than not, debt collection is valid. Okay. And we know who we may owe a debt to and, um, and how that might, uh, uh, we want to talk about how that might affect folks' credit. Absolutely. So Daniel, would you like to talk a little bit about credit report and how the debt collection accounts reporting can be impactful? Absolutely. So as we talked about earlier, the, the immediate impact is with, with a debt collection is you owe money, right? That's, you're looking at how can I have, how can I pay this off? How can I work out some kind of an agreement? Uh, so that's the, the, the financial immediate side of it. But there's also the credit side of it. So a creditor has the option that it's not required by law, but they have the option and they often do of reporting to your credit reporting to the three major credit reporting agencies that there's a debt collection, how much it is, when it started, and that will very likely have a negative impact on your credit report. So what you can do is the first thing is, um, if it is, let's assume that it's accurate, right? You look at your credit report, you're like, yep, I know that I owe that, I know I haven't paid it. Um, one of the things you can do is try and open a dialogue with the creditor. Um, it never hurts to ask. 
Um, occasionally you might get a creditor that, that's not willing to, says that it's against their policy. That's fine. They have the right to not negotiate with you. Um, but a lot of them will. So say, hey, I've, I owe X amount of dollars. Would you be willing to negotiate with me to A, I, so that A, you get paid and B, this gets taken off of my credit reports. Um, sometimes that's called a payment for deletion. There, they, there's a lot of different lingo, but basically it's you pay them, they take it off your report. They don't have to, but they can. The most important thing is, that is uh, Amy, is that if so, somebody re wants to do this, get it in writing. Because if you don't get it in writing, it's your word against theirs. And if there's nothing in writing, you lose. So 100%, if you're gonna, if you're gonna enter into some kind of an agreement with a creditor that you pay them and they remove it, please get it in writing, have them send you an email, have them send you a letter, something on letterhead, something from somebody that you can trace it back to the company and say, look, I got an agreement. I signed this that I was going to pay you. So that's the, my biggest number one thing, get it in writing. What great guidance, Daniel. Um, there's something exciting coming up with regard to medical debt and medical debt collection accounts. Uh, let's spend maybe a few moments talking about that. Yeah, so this is a, it's not a change to the law, but it's a change to kind of the internal policies of the credit bureaus. They've agreed that sometimes medical debt isn't fair. Um, people don't choose to, uh, you know, have an appendix burst. They don't choose to break a bone. Um, and so it's kind of the logic is, does it really show their credit worthiness if they had struggled to pay something that they weren't expecting? And so beginning the, later this year, um, the credit bureaus will remove medical debt that was paid after it was sent to collections, um, plus new ones won't get added for a full year after being sent to collections. So they're going to put a little bit of extra leeway, a little bit more flexibility. It won't be as strict as a credit card debt. It very well could end up on your credit report, but slower, more carefully than it would otherwise, giving everybody just a little bit more breathing room where, where it comes to your unpaid medical debt impacting your credit score. How wonderful is that, Daniel, that the credit reporting agencies um, are really looking to ease some of the burden uh, for, for folks that, that may be having some struggles uh, with regard to medical debt. So that really is great news and I appreciate the details around that. Yeah, a few a few other small details, um, as it says that everybody can see, uh, medical debts less than five hundred dollars starting in the future um, aren't even going to show up. Um, and so, as it says, changes could remove nearly seventy percent of medical debt um, from Americans' credit reports. So, great news for everybody. Something to keep in mind. Um, so, if you have have medical debt that this applies to, you could see a little bit of. Uh, improvement to your credit report in the next few months. Um, and then going forward, it could help you as well. And as always, Daniel, right, we, you know, we, we suggest that folks um, pay their lawful debts. And sometimes life happens, and you can't, or sometimes there's errors in the reporting. So it's, it's, uh, it's important to be an educated consumer and be aware of what's reporting on your credit reports so you can spot if there are some inaccuracies. Absolutely, and, and Amy, I'm glad you said it that way, but right in a perfect world, we'd all pay our debts on time, right? And none of this would matter. There no, wouldn't be any debt collections because we'd all paid off, but right, nobody's in a perfect situation. You, it, sometimes the finances don't quite add, quite add up. Um, so if you can, pay it, right? That's the, the best way to keep your credit score pristine is just to pay your debts on time. But when that doesn't work, there's lots of avenues that people can take. Um, but like, yeah, like you said, Amy, just because you owe a debt and something similar shows up in your credit report doesn't mean that it's accurate. Doesn't mean that it's verifiable. If the, if the company can't prove it, then it might need to be removed. So that, that will kind of lead into our next part of our discussion about what do you do when that happens? Great, disputing those collection accounts. And of course, consumers can do it on their own. And maybe you want to speak a little bit about how folks might want to dispute items that they feel might be inaccurate uh, or may not be able to be substantiated. Um, we can go into this. I mean, there's so much information and that's part of what we do. 
right? Fighting and advocating uh, around consumer rights. Absolutely. Daniel, would you like to speak a little bit about the dispute process? Sure, yeah, I'd be happy to. So the dispute process, uh, like you said, it's it can feel complicated. It there's a, there's lots of resources online that can help consumers. We you know if you've got questions on how to do it, just you know Google it. Start start doing some research about how to uh, dispute collections on your own. Um, but it, it's it's like anything else, right? If if you're going through a divorce, if you get charged with a DUI, if you have a dispute with uh, a contractor on your house, you are more than welcome to engage in that legal process by yourself. But, you know, there's something to be said for having somebody on your side that does this full time. That's a that's a professional. That's an advocate. So to dispute those collections, you know, you're going to assert to the credit bureaus that something is wrong and you're going to provide them with information as to why. Like, you know, you say I owe this. This isn't true. Here's the paperwork to prove it. So, you know, if consumers have those questions, th that's something that Lexington Law does on a regular basis. Amy, you and I, that's, I mean, that's our bread and butter. This is what we talk about every day is how to dispute items, how to ensure that a consumer's credit reports are fair, accurate, verifiable. Um, and that's something that Lexington Law can help with. So if there are consumers that do have those questions that, you know, they've got negative items in their reports they disagree with, they've got a credit score and they're unhappy, they don't think it accurately reflects their credit worthiness, uh, we invite them to give us a call because Lexington Law might be able to help them. So um, no matter where you are in your credit repair journey, if, you're, if you've got terrible credit and nobody will even talk to you versus if you've got great credit, but you just want to maintain that credit, help somebody you monitor, help, help you have somebody help you monitor that credit, uh, then reach out, reach out to Lexington Law, reach out to somebody, talk to somebody about getting some professional assistance in ensuring that your credit reports are fair, accurate, verifiable, and that you can get that car loan that you need to get into that house you need. You know, interest rates are starting to go up on mortgages. So it's going to be tougher to get that mortgage rate that you want. But you're starting to see the same thing with cars. So credit worthiness in a tough economy is going to become even more important. So um, talk to somebody. That's my invitation. Talk to somebody. Talk to Lexington. Um, and see what we can do to help you. What a great invitation, Danielle. Thank you so much. Thanks for um, chatting with, with me today and with what, you know, whichever viewers uh, are, are, are tuning in, if you will. It's important to have good credit to maintain it. And from where we sit, it's, it's again, I mentioned earlier, but a great privilege to help consumers leverage their, their consumer rights. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, everybody.